Welcome to Haxby Shed and the Diary of a TIG Welding Beginner 6. Now, I've been shooting this video today and I've come to the end and I think I need to put in a bit of explanation. I've made some great progress, but my goodness, it's taken me some time. And I was getting so much porosity at one point, I convinced myself that I'd got an air leak in my argon line. And I went off in, in this completely wrong direction <laughs> trying to sort that out. But actually, I found no leak, of course. I made a simple change fairly late in the day that's transformed my weld, which is on this piece of eight millimeter plate. I'm trying to do two fillets there. I'm practicing to make a bracket, which I need to do for another project. Transformed it from, you know, just bubbles and craters into something that's really, I think, for me, quite good. So, I hope you enjoy the journey. Stick with it. Enjoy. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> now in parts one to five, you've seen me messing about, trying to take various materials to get the hang of it, including a bit of work on the welding rotator. And in those videos, I really didn't care too much. It didn't matter anyway, if my welding was successful or not. But now I need to weld something for a project. I'm making a bracket, and the bracket is eight millimeter black mild steel plate and I need to weld it in a T, like that, more or less. I've got some material to practice on here, but honestly, if I can't get this to work, I'm probably nowhere with TIG, am I? So I really do want this to work and it is for a real purpose this time. The bracket will feature in some future videos uh, as you see that project unfold, but for this, I'm just doing the practice work. So, I'll show you how I clean the material up and prepare it. I'll show you how I set the settings on my welder. This is just sharing. I'm not telling you this is how to do it. It's just sharing what I'm doing. Um, but I have been watching Jody, I think his name is, on welding tips and tricks. I find that a very informative channel to watch. So I've got an idea what the settings should be for this material. Here's my practice piece. Acetone, cleaning. Right, let's get set up. You know when you stick welding, all you have to do really is remember to turn it on. Because quite often I'm welding at the same current always anyway. But with this, you know, you know, it's a long list of things. Turn welder on. Turn gas on. Three or four times I must have tried to weld without gas. Choose the right program. So it needs to be five for the first pre-stored program that's suitable. I want to turn the current up to 125 amps. That's what welding tips and tricks told me. I'm on DC. I want to move this to pedal. So the pedal works. Okay, I think that's it. Right, now I want to check the gas flow. Not necessary, but you see this latex glove, I've cut off one finger, I'm going to put that finger over here, press the foot pedal and watch that blow off. Now don't give me any rude comments. Well that was going to be a bit of a joke, but I had actually forgotten to turn on the second gas valve, so it turned out to be a serious point. Set gas rate. That's four, I just need to take it up a little. Next thing, get comfortable. Yep. Something like that anyway. Try to remember to hold the torch pretty much upright. 
like I say, I'm not telling you, I'm just sharing what I'm doing, okay? Eyesight is a problem. I need to go for an eye test. My eyes are pretty good with these glasses, but even so, I'm struggling a bit here. I've got the cheetah lens in my hood, um, which helps a lot. So, can I hold this still enough? It's shaking a bit, actually. I'm obviously not quite comfortable enough. First, I'm just going to try to tack the end of this, these two, in a T. And without any filler wire. Here goes, folks. This is puzzling to me. My gas was set at five litres per minute. You can see that porosity in the centre of the well there. I didn't try to use any rod. I didn't dip the tungsten. The tungsten's quite burnt. It's almost as if there's either not enough gas or there's a leak somewhere pulling in oxygen. That was a freshly ground tungsten and honestly I did not dip that but it looks quite burnt to me. Well, that's the second end, and if anything, that's worse. So something, I'm sure something is not right. Now, ever since I've had this welder, if I turn the gas off at the bottle, the pressure drops away quite quickly. i would noticed that and been a bit concerned about it, but now I'm going to investigate it. I've got some other valves up there. I know the problem, if there is a problem, is not in the regulator unit. And I'm fairly sure I don't have any leaks in the pipe to the welder because I tried the old hot water and soap suds test. So if I've got a problem, it's going to be inside the welder itself, I think. Now, if the fact is that the gas valve is just letting some gas pass, and it's coming out of this nozzle, well, probably that's okay, because it's not drawing in any air. But if the leak is to uh, the outside, a loose connection or something in there, then as I understand it, even though the gas is under pressure, it could still be drawing in some uh, contaminants from the air. I might be clutching at straws, but I'm gonna see if I can get this welder apart, get the cover off anyway, and see if I can find out where that pressure is leaking to. As I look at it now, it's gone down by 50% the pressure um, just in five minutes. People have commented, stop overthinking it, just get on with it. I'm not sure it's as simple as that. Let's do an easy test. Right. Well, there's nothing getting past the gas valve. If I take this end off, I should be able to get this case cover off. So this has four screws to this side, to the other side, and then three screws underneath. There's a lot in this. It's not just a box with a big transformer like the uh, old AC welders. Well, there's the gas valve. And this black pipe here just runs to the front. And we know that the gas isn't getting past that gas valve. So now I'm beginning to think there's nothing wrong with this. It must be something to do with my external connections. Let's test the pipe. Am I losing my mind here? Well, that pressure is not dropping. 
So there's nothing wrong with the pipe. It must be that I just didn't tighten the glands tight enough or I didn't get a proper seal. 20 minutes further on and that's totally held pressure. I suspect all this is going to make no difference to my welding, but at least it eliminates it. Well, look at this. That section to there, with all the porosity and the rough texture, was done with a number six cup. And this was done with a number seven cup. It's like night and day. The moment I started on here, I knew that it was totally different. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Now, it just so happens that that's a mild steel rod and that's a chromoly rod. Filler wire, I'm talking about. So, this section, for me, perfect. This section, you can see it. Number six cup, number seven cup. That was the only difference. I really struggled to start the arc even here with this number six cup. There just wasn't enough gas coverage. And inspired by this, I'm going to order up some gas lenses. Not fancy ones, but there was no point spending the money until I understood what I was doing. Right, here we go. No pedal, just using the trigger. I'll show you when I've done it. Well, that was 120 here, which I felt was a bit cold. 130, 140. I think probably this section at 130 was about right. Right, here goes. I'll try and video this. My hands might get in the way, but I'll keep the rod long and see if you can see it. Well, in that first section, I knocked the camera. So we'll try again with the second half of this weld. Didn't do quite so well with that bit got some porosity here and I could hear a kind of fizzling in this area. Now I wasn't as comfortable as I should have been and I think my torch instead of being upright was maybe a little bit over, I'm not sure anyway, but I also realized I was probably staying in one place too long. Along here I was moving along a bit quicker and I think that worked better. I've been practicing short runs on the back of that bit of plate and I'm quite happy with those now. There's just one place I got a little bit of porosity just there. But otherwise it's looking quite good, I think. Anyway, my gas lenses have arrived. So we'll have a look at those now. So here's two gas lenses, one for 1.6 mil and one for 2.4 mil. They take larger cups, so I've got five, six, seven, eight, and a larger insulator there. So the idea is that these have a mesh inside and they cause the gas to come out of the cup in a kind of straight jet. Hence the comment about focused gas lens. So the coverage should be better. You should use less gas. Now this is new for me, but what I'm going to do is to set up a gas lens with a 2.4 tungsten and a number six cup because You'll have seen my welding with a number six cup without the gas lens, um, you know, was quite porous. And the seven was okay, so let's just see if we can do it with a six with the lens on. Uh -huh. So I use the same collet. You leave this one on, you add this one, like that, and then the cup will go on like that. 
So we've got the tungsten, the collet, the gas lens, the insulator. My tungsten's a bit short, so it kept dropping inside. Right, that goes like that. Okay. Let's just lock this up for the time being. Put the cup on, number six. That goes on there. Yaha! And then I'll just adjust this to length. And we'll try it. Well, we'll give this a go. Thanks to Al, who pointed out that it's almost impossible to hold a torch steady without a rest. You know, and people say, haven't you seen this video of that video channel? Didn't you watch Jody? But the point is that people don't accept advice until they're ready to accept advice. Think about when you were a teenager and how much advice you ignored. Well, I'm ready for that bit of advice now. My hands are a bit chilly now, it's shaking a bit. Try and find a better position. I think I'll be all right with that. Okay, well, I won't video welding. I'll bring you back when I've had a go. Well, that went first time, no trouble. Number six gas lens, number six standard cup. That's full of holes. That one's probably the best weld I've done. I haven't polished it, of course, but, and I didn't turn down the gas rate either. It's still about six liters per minute. It's early days for gas lenses. They've only just arrived, but it does seem to have made quite a difference. By the way, that was a chromoly filler wire, ERATSD2, I think it is. We'll end this one here. I hope it was useful for you. Thank you for watching Hacks Be Shared. Thank you to Dean, who commented that these come apart. And then when you've taken this off, you can set the scale to any direction you want. I had no idea, I thought these were sealed. So that's a handy tip. And get my gauges facing the right way now.